All right, let's get going. Hello, everyone. Welcome to our quick 30 minute webinar. My name is Phil Corbin. I'm the marketing director here at Verify. And I'm here today with Dan Schmidt, our superstar systems engineer. In today's webinar, we're going to cover a feature that we're releasing very soon. It's a web based DID inventory management system included in our upcoming 12 1 release. We're going to start off with a quick overview of our company, what we do, and then also get into what DID is and how it can help your organization keep track and better manage your DIDs. We'll jump into a live demo and guide you through the feature. After the demo, we're going to pause for a Q&A, get some of your questions answered. Also, during the demo, if you have any questions, make sure to ask them in the Q&A panel. I think it's in the bottom left screen. And make sure to notify the host and the panelist. Uh, after Q&A, we'll reward one lucky attendee a $50 Amazon gift card. So hang around to the end so you see what you may have won. Thanks again for joining. Um, going through a quick overview of Verify. So we are the preferred analytics and management solution for Cisco collaboration. We provide industry leading CDR reporting and call analytics, customizable dashboards and widgets, UCCX reporting, so contact center, remote phone control, change management. But today we're going to be covering DID management. So if you have any other questions on any of our other features, we can definitely take them offline and get those answered. But let's get into it. So DID uh, stands for direct inward dial. It's a number what's used to call an organization from an external party or PSTN or telephone service. So an example would be 650-555-1234. So that would be like the main line for a company. And this is the number customers and others would dial. So in this example, it would like reach a receptionist internally. So CUCM is aware of DNs, directory numbers, but it's not aware of DIDs. So unlike DNs, DIDs are not configured in CUCM. They're configured in gateways, trunks, then route DID calls to CUCM DNs. So a DID block is a range of DID numbers like 650-555-1000 to 650-555-1999, which depending on the availability may not be together or in sequence. So large organizations will have many sites, locations, each with one or more multiple DID blocks, if that makes sense. So the problem, why, why a web-based DID management? Why did we add this as a new feature? So believe it or not, a lot of companies are still managing their DIDs using a spreadsheet. So the problem with this is what happens if someone forgets to update the spreadsheet? How do you manage which users have access to the spreadsheet? It can quickly become out of sync with CUCM. And how do you, how do you manage multiple DID blocks and clusters in that spreadsheet? Most importantly, how do you just find quickly the first available DID if you, ever, if you want to? So with our new feature, the DID management feature, you can store multiple DID blocks and access them without relying on a spreadsheet. Number availability is automatically discovered in real time, CUCM status. Assigning user permissions to blocks is super easy and I'll show you that uh, in the demo here real quick. Uh, DID blocks can be associated to one or multiple CUCM clusters. And you'll see that in the demo coming up here quick. And again, you can, you can quickly search and find and also report out on all available and used DIDs. So let's, let's get into it. Let's see the DID management feature in action. So I'm, I'm logged in to verify here. You can see I'm on, on our dashboards and widgets um, page. What I'm going to do is in the top header here, you see all of our different features. I'm going to flip over to DN and DID management. You may be familiar with DN management. What's new here is DID management and configure. So the very first thing I'm going to do is click configure. It's going to default to blocks, but I'm going to go to DID sites because you need to have sites set up before you, uh, you'd want to uh, associate blocks to those. So I'm just going to go into headquarters. You can, you can create a site from scratch, give it a name, a description, so others can tell what the site is for, address, et cetera. 
and then you can see any DID blocks associated to it. So I'll go into headquarters here, just edit so you can see. And you know, it's a name, it has a name, an address, et cetera. And you can see the blocks that we've associated to it. If there was some other blocks that we want to, we could just select them and move them over. So we have headquarters, so we'll focus on that today. So we'll go uh, and create a new block. Let's do that. Let's let's create a DID block. So what we're going to do is give it a name. So we'll we'll focus on headquarters. We'll give it a name. We'll just focus on you know, three thousand range. Your provider. Let's use SIP City. Uh, your CCM circuit or trunk ID. We'll just use that, whatever's in CUCM, and we'll associate it to headquarters. So we'll, we'll select that site. So number info, here's where you define the number range. So we're gonna start with the area code here first. Um, we'll use 341, and we'll use 3000 to 399. What's cool is you can actually exclude number numbers and number ranges. So we can do a range here. And we can do individual numbers if we want. So that excludes the range 3001 to 3005 and then the individual number here. You can add as many as you want. Now the good stuff, CUCM association. So the number availability is automatically discovered based in real time in CUCM. So remember that. So it auto correlates to CUCM DN status and the availability. Uh, you can associate the block to a cluster or many clusters. For this example, we have one cluster available. So we can just add that. If you had multiple, you could select them here. Um, E164 prefix defines the format for international numbers. So in our case, it would be plus one for US. And you can add a site code prefix if you want. So three, four, one, if you had a site code. Um, and then also the DN match count. So it's, in our case, it would be four. If you have any route partitions, you can select individuals here, or you can just use any route partition. So we'll leave that blank for now. And then mapping exceptions are when you're mapping a 10 digit DID number to a four digit internal D DN and they don't match. So example would be, um, let's see, 341, 3007, and it could match to a DN 4444, right? So you could, you could create as many mapping. I know a lot of organizations have a lot of mapping exceptions. So you can do that here. Another super cool feature, tagged numbers. Uh, it's a powerful feature. Uh, it's, a, it's the ability to apply tags to number ranges or individual numbers. You, know, you can also search for these tags as well. So if I wanted to apply a tag to 3010 um, to 320, and I could you know, make this cafeteria, I could apply that tag and we can create uh, another tag if we want to individual numbers. Um, so tagging is really cool. You can search on those as well. User permissions. So you can apply user and group permissions to a site and also blocks. Uh, this is kind of read, write, in this case, read tag. So I can, uh, you know, assign a user, and give the Chicago user type and give them tag privileges so they can tag. Or I can just, um, you know, uh, find a, uh, a user, this is an example again, and just read only, right? So they can go just read only uh, the DIDs. So that is basic overview of creating a block. So we're going to go ahead and save that. And you can see it saved our block right here, right? Total numbers, excluded, tagged, right? Based on Based on what I configured in that block. So the, DN, D, the DID management tab um, is where you can find the first available DN, for example. So I'll go back to headquarters, I'll select our block. It'll automatically populate the range here, 3000 to 3999. And we can just use a wildcard here. And let's find the available. There we go. 
I can inline apply tags to that DID if I'd want to. I can delete it. Super powerful. I can search on tags as well. I can look for active and inactive unassigned. And then um, you can run a report. So we'll, we'll look for all available, we'll export results to report. You can organize the numbers by status or number. Other options here, uh, column types, you know, what you want to show in the report. And then importantly, delivery, we can do an Excel, PDF, immediately download, or we can email this to somebody if we'd like. Let's just download this here for an example. So we'll look at the report. Puts it all nicely, the summaries. It's just a really, really organized way to keep track of your DIDs. Great. So I have Dan here with me. Dan, do we have any questions from those on the call? Yeah, we do actually have a few today, Phil. Um, all right, so for quest first question I could answer here is, can I license just the DID management uh, feature here? Uh, so yes, uh, we've coded the, the application to license DID management by itself, that is possible. Um, what we've actually done is we've split out DID management, that's all I'm automatically gonna include the DN management component, but you can also just purchase DN management um, if you're not interested in tracking those DIDs along with it, so that is possible. <clears throat> Some other questions that came in, uh, Lucas, AD account supported for permissioning. So uh, that would be um, as long as the system is AD integrated, then yes, of course. Um, so, you know, the, the role-based security or the feature-based security access is on that account within the application. So, yes, uh, that's not a problem. I'm just answering these questions live here for, from uh, the people answering via the Q&A chat box here. Um, for Maurice, is this feature included with my current subscription? Um, let me take that offline uh, with you, Maurice, later. I'd have to actually look up to see what you've got. Uh, so our general rule is if, if you already have DN management and if it's purchased DN management, uh, then yes, this DID management would come into play um, at no cost, right? We're gonna grandfather those users in. If you don't have DN management or you've been given that as kind of like a promo, then this is a newly added on feature that would be sold, okay? Um, another question from Lucas here um, for AD account supported, SSO supported, yes, uh, of course, yep. Uh, some of the other questions here all right, can, can we verify show the associated end user as a detail column? Um, so it's actually the DN that's gonna be associated to the end user. Um, so right now into the initial release, that is not yet possible, but it will be coming in the near future uh, version. Uh, so you'll be able to basically track a DID to a DN and show who end user wise through queries to the call manager who owns that DN. So that is coming here, but not in initial release. All right, here's an excellent question I've got. Um, we have multiple clusters that share the same blocks of DIDs. Uh, will that work? Uh, yes, uh, so our DID, our, uh, as, as Phil kind of showed uh, earlier, our DID blocks can be associated to one or more clusters. Um, so um, it's really not tied to a single cluster in this case, uh, much like you know, this, you know, some of the other features of our application like CDR, this is a global feature. So you could tie you know, multiple clusters to one block and we search across all of them at, uh, at the same time. All right, another cluster question coming in. Um, we have both Cisco and Avaya PBXs uh, and some DIDs are assigned to users from the Avaya platform can verify see those Avaya DIDs? Um, yes and no. Um, uh, on, on the technical front, the no. So our DID mapping uh, to the actual DN will only be looking for that matching within a call manager cluster. 
Um, however, as Phil kind of illustrated, you can exclude DIDs um, within a block. And so you could do it that way where um, that number won't be included. Otherwise, you can include that DID within the block and apply a tag to it. So maybe you could just put a tag saying a vibe PBX on that DID. So it's not going to give the status of that DID, whether it's available, inactive, or unavailable, but it, you know, we'll point them out via a tag, right? <clears throat> Uh, all right, looking here, that's all the other uh, last questions here on the list. Are there any other questions that I could answer at this time? Again, if, if you think of something later on, please reach out um, to Phil at verify.com or Dan at verify.com and we'll get those answered. But yeah, um, ask away. Going once. <laughs> Any more questions? Advice? All right. Thanks, Dan. You're very welcome. Oh, one more question. Uh, more from question. Lucas. Yep, security wise, can uh, some people just see some blocks? Excellent question, Lucas. Yes. Uh, so we have role based uh, security on this, and so you can assign uh, specific users to specific blocks and sites, right, since they're, they're related to. So if you have three sites and a, a single user at each site managing that site's uh, blocks of DIDs, you could definitely associate that. That was in the configure, uh, I think, the last tab of the block uh, configuration. You could associate what users can uh, have either tagging permissions, full pr uh, uh, privileges, or just read-only access to that block. Great question. Question, yep. We got another one. Uh, you have AD users and AD groups permissioning or just users? Um, <laughs> as far as feature-based security goes, that can be group. Um, AD users and AD groups permissioning. Uh, Lucas, let me get back to you on that. Um, I think at, in this case, it's just going to be users uh, as far as read-only. Um, uh, you know, read-only or tagging privileges specific to the individual blocks. Uh, but let me get back to you for it with a more definite answer on that. Great. Any any more questions? All right. The moment we've all been waiting for. <laughs> And the winner is, congratulations, Jack. Jack Ride, you have won a $50 Amazon gift card. And uh, we'll be sending it to your email after the meeting. Congrats. And uh, I wanted to thank everybody for attending today. If you want to try out DID as an early field, field trial, uh, just email us at beta at verify.com and you can give it a test run um, uh, again, it will be released very soon, uh, but we're still accepting EFT beta trials. So just email us and we'll get you set up. Uh, a recording of this webinar is gonna be available at verify.com slash company slash webinars. And again, if you wanna try out any other feature or see what we have to offer, verify.com slash trial, you can message myself or Dan directly through email. Uh, thanks a lot. Have Thanks a great so day. Bye-bye.